And as to Don and I, we every single witness testified, we have nothing to do with this. They went in witness after witness. This is not what they did in the company. It didn't matter to this guy. You know, we were trophies on a wall for this guy. You know, that was Eric Trump right there saying he and Don Jr. had nothing to do with anything. Why in the world would they get hit with a verdict in the New York Attorney General civil fraud case? Of course, we now know that uh, Justice Arthur and Goran awarded a total of about three hundred and sixty four million dollars combined. Eric and Don Jr. were separately hit with four million dollars or so each as part of the sum that adds up to about 364 million donald trump was hit with about 355 million dollars or so as part of the verdict but as you listen to eric say that i mean eric you were supposed to be the head of the organization you're supposed to be the leader of this organization and so when you're claiming that you run the best companies and the best real estate companies, but then you say that you know nothing about the statements of financial condition and have no role or involvement at all, that's that's kind of the problem. And uh, when Don Jr. testified during the trial as well, he wasn't even aware that the Trump organization currently did not have a chief financial officer. Y'all are supposed to be like running the show here. By the way, here's Eric Trump again as part of this kind of whining tour that he did last night. Talk about how it's the best real estate company that there is. Play this clip. They wouldn't be doing this. This has never been tried in New York before. There's no better real estate company in the country than, than us. And right here is Eric Trump whining uh, more, but talking about how we built the skyline in Manhattan. You didn't build the skyline in Manhattan. You got, you got one or two buildings in Manhattan um, you know, build the skyline, just idiotic stuff they say. Here, play this clip. To a city, my father built the skyline of New York City, and this is the thanks he gets? By the way, here is Don Jr. right here, and he was asked what went through his mind when he got hit, and the Trump family got hit with this $364 million verdict. Play this clip. So you, when you saw that number, what were you thinking? It's just insane. I mean, it's it's literally I mean, there are Democrat lawyers in New York that are calling and saying this is crazy. This is so much worse. This is five times worse than we thought it would be. Uh, you know, everyone's screaming about Russia, Russia, Russia. But the reality is what we complain about in Russia is happening right here in the United States of America. By the way, not exactly. Uh, I mean, that's what he says today. I mean, did, did you turn on the news? Um, about what happened to uh, Navalny. I mean, did you want to see what actually is happening in Russia? Um, the tactics that you and your family use to just lie about everything is very Putin-esque. That's all I'd say here. And here, Don Jr. wants to provide false uh, data about, we already won in the Court of Appeals. What are you talking about? We already won. Half of the 364 is already, talking about $364 million, half of it's already thrown out here. Play Don Jr. right here. You never know. I mean, you got to remember that half of the judgment that you're talking about in the 364, half of that was already ruled inadmissible because of stature of limitations in the Court of Appeals. The Court of Appeals has already ruled that, and this judge simply decided to ignore that. that. And again, that's just not the way courts work, Don Jr., because if the Court of Appeals actually ruled that there was the statute of limitations um, dismissing the case, they would have dismissed you from the case the same way they actually did dismiss Ivanka Trump from the case. Ivanka's out because she claimed she didn't know anything and she was not uh, a co-trustee of the revocable trust during the relevant period. She kind of threw you and your brother under the bus right there, but she got out because she said she had no communications or she couldn't recall or remember anything during the relevant time period where y'all are on the documents during that time period. That's why there is not an issue there regarding the uh, statute of limitations. Here's more of Eric Trump whining and saying how the system's weaponized and said, but after I show you this, I want to kind of delve into the actual testimony here because I could show you the Trumps whining forever and crying and complaining because that's all they do. They just behave like losers. Everything's whining. They're out, they're out to get us. They're out to get us. Wah, 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 wah. Then let's actually show you the testimony, though. Here's Eric Trump whining some more about uh, this is the demise of a politically weaponized system. Here, play this clip. This is the state of New York. I caution anybody. I caution anybody even thinking about moving to New York to just... 
be careful. This is not the state that my father grew up in. This is not the state that we grew up in. It, it, this is the demise of a politically weaponized system, and it's it's horribly sad, Janine. And and I promise you, we're gonna fight this, and we're gonna win at the appellate division because honestly, it's so egregious. It's so egregious. I promise you, we're gonna get it overturned. All right. So you saw Don Jr. whine. You see Eric whining, going on there whining. Toward, let Let's go take a look at first. Why don't we take a look at their depositions, right? Um, you know, Eric saying this is a strong real estate company. Take a look at Eric's deposition. Play the clip. I don't remember a video conference in 2021 talking about the statement of financial condition. Uh, uh, did, did I? I mean, maybe you could show me something, but I, uh, you know, again, I don't think I ever signed a statement of financial condition. I, I, I don't, you know, I've done a lot to try and jog my memory, and I simply can't because I don't think I've ever had any involvement in the statement of financial condition, to the best of my knowledge. Heart health and staying healthy, especially when you have family, friends, or loved ones that you want to be able to spend as much time with as possible. It's so important. February is heart health month in the United States, and more than half the population would still benefit from blood pressure support. Super Beats Heart Chews are the number one doctor, pharmacist, and cardiologist recommended way to support healthy blood pressure, and they even promote heart healthy energy without the stimulants. Paired with a healthy lifestyle, the antioxidants in Super Beats are clinically shown to be nearly two times more effective at promoting normal blood pressure than a healthy lifestyle alone. And with over 40,000 five-star reviews and counting, people are raving about Super Beats Heart Shoes. Super Beats Heart Shoes are absolutely delicious and are truly much better than any alternative supplements out there. I take my Super Beats Heart Shoes each morning and it's really helped kickstart my day. After taking my Super Beats Heart Shoes, I feel like I have more energy, and am ready to take on the day. Super Beats is the number one doctor, pharmacist, and cardiologist recommended heart chew for cardiovascular health support. It's blood pressure support you can trust. Support your heart health with Super Beats Heart Chews. Get a free month supply of Super Beats Heart Chews on all bundles and a free full-size bag of turmeric chews valued at $25 with your order by going to MidasBeats.com. We've got our own domain name folks. It's M-E-I-D-A-S-B-E-E-T-S dot com. Get this exclusive offer now only at MidasBeats.com. Okay, let me show you this other clip, another portion of Eric Trump's deposition. Play this clip. Um, and do you recognize the name David McArdle? Um, I recognize the name very vaguely, um, and I yeah, I recognize the name very, very vaguely. Uh, Cushman, Cushman Wakefield. Um, yes, I, I recognize the name. Um, and does this refresh your recollection that in mid-2014, um, Cushman and Wakefield had been retained to provide consulting services related to an analysis of the estimated value of a potential conservation easement on all or part of the Seven Springs estate? Uh, truthfully, Andy, it really doesn't. Um, this isn't to me. Um, I didn't sign this. This looked like it was something between Sherry Dillon um, and Cushman and Wakefield. Um, it's extremely consistent with what she would have done. Um, it's extremely inconsistent with what my role is at the company. I just don't, I think I was very kind of clear that to the best of my knowledge, I really haven't been involved. Um, in appraisal work on this property. Well, um, are, are you saying that this engagement um, could have happened without your knowledge and approval? I'm just saying I don't remember this. Um, I'm not on here. I never signed this document. Um, I, I just don't seem to recall anything about this. You know, it's, I pour concrete. I operate properties. I don't focus on
appraisals between a law firm and, and Cushman. This is just not it's not what I do in my day to day responsibilities. And, and I, I mean, I hardly recognize the name on here. Okay, so I guess Eric's testimony is you know doesn't know anything. Okay, well. What about Don Jr.? Let's take a look at Don Jr.'s deposition. Play this clip. Do you have any familiarity with an acronym GAAP, G-A-A-P? Generally accepted accounting principles, yes. Okay. How did you become familiar with that acronym? Probably in Accounting 101 at Wharton. Okay. Um, what do they teach you about generally accepted accounting principles in Wharton? Uh, well, I'm not an accountant, but that they are generally accepted. Anything else? That's that's pretty much what I remember from accounting 101. So. <laughs> Have you told me everything you know about GAP? <laughs> uh, basically, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure I could come up with some creative uh, uh, stuff to kill time, but I'd be doing neither of us a favor in terms of educating ourselves. All right, Don Jr., you don't know anything about generally accepting accounting principles. Got it. You went to Wharton, claim you don't know about generally accepting accounting principles. Ivanka. What about Ivanka? Here, play the clip from Ivanka's deposition. Play the clip. The financial statement with your father before it was sent. I don't believe so. I'm not sure what it means by recent financial statement. So I don't, well, I don't. You wrote it, ma'am. What did you mean? I, like I said, I don't remember. I don't remember the email I could have meant. Um, I don't know. It could have been on the property. It could have been on any number of things. So I, I just well, don't know. It's not what your email says. My father will send you his most recent financial statement. The prior sentence, you mentioned that you were including marketing materials on the property as well as our projections. And in our, you were referring to the Trump Organization, right? Or his and ours, yes. I mean, I use them a little interchangeably, but um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think the last sentence is clear. My father will all, this is your statement. My father will also send you his most recent financial statement. Okay. Do you understand that to mean that it was your father's financial statement? I mean, it says what it says, but I just don't, I don't have any recollection of this. I don't know what I meant by it, or I don't recall okay. having sent it. So I, I don't know. All right, let's take a look at the testimony then. This is how... Uh, Justice Arthur and Goran described uh, Eric Trump's testimony here. Eric Trump's credibility was severely damaged when he repeatedly denied knowing that his father even compiled a statement of financial condition that valued his assets and showed his net worth until this case came into fruition. Upon being confronted with copious documentary evidence conclusively demonstrating otherwise, Eric finally conceded that at least as early as August 20th, 2020, 2013, he knew about his, state, his father's statement of financial conditions begrudgingly acknowledging, quote, it appears that way, yes. Moreover, emails indicate that contrary to Eric Trump's testimony, McConney relied, the COO, relied on Eric Trump for the $161 million valuation of the undeveloped seven mansion, seven mansion plot at Seven Springs from 2012 to 2014. In particular, an August 20th, 2013 email from McConney to Eric Trump with the subject Seven Springs reads, Hi, Eric, I'm working on your dad's annual financial statement. I need to value Seven Springs. Attached, please find how we valued it last year. Can you let me know when you have the time to talk about this year's valuation? Thanks, Jeff. When the documentary evidence against him became overwhelming, Eric Trump reversed his previous testimony. Question, is it correct that when you received this email in August of 2013, you understood that your father had annual financial statement and you understood that Mr. McConney was asking you for information specifically to assist him in working on the notes to the annual financial statement? Isn't this correct? Answer from Eric Trump. Yes. Although Eric Trump advised McConney in August 2013 to continue to use the $161 million value for the proposed seven mansion development at Seven Springs, emails demonstrate that Eric Trump 
was aware of evaluation by a professional appraiser engaged by the Trump organization who valued the hypothetical development at approximately $5.5 million. By September 8, 2014, a mere four days before Eric Trump advised Bakani to continue using the $161 million as the value for the seven mansion development in the 2014 Statement of Financial Condition, David McArdle of Cushman and Wakefield had completed an appraisal for the property and delivered a verbal estimate to Eric Trump of $14 million. Eric Trump's testimony that he had very limited involvement in the appraisal work that McArdle performed on Seven Springs and Briarcliff was shown to be false when he was confronted with the ample contemporaneous documentary evidence demonstrating otherwise. Okay, so like, let's focus on the data. As I always say here at the Midas Touch Network, just show me the data. And that's Eric Trump's testimony. And then you go into Don Jr.'s testimony, and it talks very similarly there about how Don Jr. claimed that uh, he didn't know much about the organization and he didn't know much what he was doing. And oh, and Donald and Don Jr. rather didn't even know who the chief financial officer was of the organization. And so it was just, you know, it's just a, it's just a total mess. And as I always say, like, if you claim you're running a great business, and this is what you do, you don't know who your chief financial officer is, you don't know what generally accepting accounting principles are. I mean, even using Eric's own words, you don't know. Your your argument is even though you're the co-trustees, you're the leaders of the organization, you didn't do anything to the organization, that's your claim? Again, it's just this, it's, it's a bunch of loser mentality. It's, fraud and and just loser mentality. I'm Ben Micellis. This is the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 3 million subscribers. Thanks to your support. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.